Hello everyone just podcast TV is here please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified on new contents. Episode 76. Name your price. 40 minutes later James walked into the lobby of their hotel. Vanessa, Katie and Krista were already waiting for him. They were dressed in different styles, all were casual but chic, perfect for a vacation in the tropics. They'd each packed a small travel bag as he had asked. As these three angels surrounded him, every other man in the lobby looked on with curiosity and envy. Let's not waste any time, James said. I've got a surprise for you. Vanessa hugged one of his arms and urged him. Come on, tell us. Don't leave us in suspense. He wagged his finger at her. So sorry, I can't tell you. Katie tried next. What kind of mysterious place are we going to? Can't you tell me? I promise not to share it with these two, she added in jest. To his relief, James saw they took no offense. You'll know when we arrive. That's all I'm going to say. He really wanted to wait till the last second. He was looking forward to seeing their expressions when they saw the villa for the first time. Connie Island was about 45 minutes from Malé by speedboat taxi. Paying for transportation was fine by him. The yacht was still being maintained by East Ocean Maritime, so it wasn't available. And the local speedboat service was more convenient anyway. That way he didn't have to maneuver a vessel in the unfamiliar waters around the island. James helped the women board the luxury speedboat bound for Connie Island. He'd rented it for them only, so they were the only passengers. The scenery along the way was beautiful, but the ladies were even more so. James smiled as he caught the local driver stealing glances at them. Connie Island was indeed worthy of its reputation. Its sapphire blue waters and silvery white beaches shimmered against the clear sky. Even before the boat docked, he could already feel the leisurely atmosphere of this jewel of a tropical island. Vanessa stood at the edge of the speedboat and said to no one in particular, This is stunning. Katie and Krista were just as blown away. They pulled out their phones and took dozens of panoramic photos and selfies. They were completely thrilled. Looking at their happy faces, James couldn't help but glow inside. His life had become colorful and gorgeous because of the three of them. The villa that James received was every bit as first class as his apartment at the Murray Building in New York. In the information packet provided by Lahar, there were contact details for the butler, the groundskeepers, the security staff, everyone involved in running a high-end residence such as this. By the time they arrived, the butler was already at the dock waiting to pick them up. A silver Hummer parked about 20 yards away. He approached the speedboat after the captain headed alongside the quay. Hello, may I ask if you are Mr. James Tucker? He asked in fluent English. James nodded politely. Yes, I am. The man was about the same age as him. He had blonde hair and wore black rimmed glasses. His suit fit perfectly. A handsome and sunny man, he had the presence of a refined gentleman, but without any of the fussiness. Greetings, Mr. Tucker. I am Jack, your butler. Welcome to Connie Island. With impeccable manners, he greeted the three beauties next. After the introduction, Jack swept his arm towards the Hummer. This way, please, he said. I will drive you home. Home? The women looked confused. Jack was about to explain when James signaled him to stop. The butler was quick on the uptake. He realized what James wanted. He just smiled mysteriously and loaded their bags into the vehicle. According to the information packet, the Hummer was included with the villa. There were also two sailboats, jet skis, surfboards, scooters, bicycles. The villa had it all. After everyone got settled into the car, Jack drove straight to their destination. The island was indeed very beautiful. The women sat in the back of the large Hummer and commented on the scenery during the entire drive. The car soon arrived at a beautiful bay and stopped in front of an imposing structure. It was the villa, and it was out of this world. James understood in an instant how Lahar's company showcased their products to perfection. All the villas were built with clear access to the bay, each a respectful distance from the others. The impeccable designs ensured that lines of sight never overlap allowing the owners to enjoy the tranquility of the view without distraction. 
Jack turned in the driver's seat and said politely to the women, We've reached our destination. Welcome to your home. They were silent. It was all too beautiful. They didn't even whip out their phones to take pictures. The three of them thought they had entered heaven. This way, please, Jack said. He opened the front door and they entered the villa, their eyes sweeping over the enchanting details. They wandered from room to room, taking in the gigantic main room, the gourmet kitchen, the fully equipped gym. Outside was the private swimming pool, the garden, the huge deck with a view of the bay. It was the epitome of island luxury. Katie looked at James in wonder. Can we really stay here for the night? She asked. He immediately knew she'd misunderstood what was going on. You can stay here for as long as you want, he replied. All three women looked at each other, then began speaking at once. What? Is this really yours? Are you kidding? He opened his arms wide. Of course it's mine. Do you have any other questions? In that moment, he looked like a man who could buy anything he desired. To be honest, he felt a little arrogant. Jack looked at the stunned ladies and kindly explained. Yes, this mansion is registered under Mr. Tucker's name. You may stay as long as you want. James didn't say anything. He enjoyed savoring their astonishment. Quite suddenly, the women rushed him at the same time and pushed him onto the sofa. They fake pummeled him with their hands and pillows, laughing and shouting with glee. Jack was dumbfounded by the display. He'd heard American women were brash and forward, but this was nuts. They were whacking the owner of the villa with abandon. Let's go to the beach, Vanessa suggested. Before anyone could respond, she ran out the door, down the elegant teak stairs, and straight to the silvery beach, her long hair fluttering in the wind. Wait for me, Katie shouted. Krista was right behind them. You guys, slow down. With the women down by the water, the villa became quiet. Jack looked at James, still lying dazed on the sofa. He could not help but spread his hands and say... Sir, you are a very lucky man. James could only grin and shake his head helplessly. They walked out to the balcony and looked towards the beach where the ladies were strolling barefoot in the turquoise water. James was in no hurry to join them. Instead, he and Jack reviewed the content of the information packet. He needed to know more about this villa. During their conversation, he learned a little more about his new butler. His mother was a native of Maldives. His father was British. A photography enthusiast, he'd come to the Maldives for a vacation when he was young and met Jack's mother. He stayed and married her. After Jack finished explaining all the information about the villain was preparing to leave, there was a loud knock on the door. The butler went to answer it. James could hear him speaking with someone, then hurrying back to him in a panic. Sir, there are people outside, many of them. They said they are looking for you. James frowned. He had only just arrived at this unfamiliar place. Why would someone be looking for him? Unable to come up with a logical explanation, he followed Jack back to the door. There was indeed a group of people standing outside. There were about 20 of them. They looked tough, like gangsters. Two men were standing in front. One of them was bald, the other had dreadlocks. The bald man was holding a cigar. He stared at James without saying a word, but his gaze was especially fierce. His bare arms were engraved with tattoos. James could tell at a glance whoever these people were, they did not come with good intentions. However, he had grandmaster level combat skills. He was not afraid. He knew the bald man was the leader. He calmly looked at him and asked in English, What can I do for you? Sure enough, as soon as he finished speaking, the one with the dreadlocks whispered a few words into the other man's ear. The leader grinned and signaled the man with the dreads to speak on his behalf. He walked up to James and said with an untrustworthy smile, Sir, do not misunderstand. We are not here to cause trouble. My boss said that he wants to buy your villa. Name your price. James didn't bother with pleasantries. He waved his hand dismissively and said firmly, Tell your boss that it's not for sale. Episode 77, Gilligan's Island? The gangster with the dreadlocks frowned. He thought he could intimidate this guy. 
After all, money was a good thing, especially when it was offered by someone backed up by 20 henchmen. He did not expect to be rejected so directly. There was no room for negotiation at all. The dreadlock gangster glowered at James but did not say anything. He went back to his bald leader and whispered in his ear. Although James had amplified hearing, he couldn't quite make out their mumbled words, but now he was certain that the dreadlock gangster was the translator. As expected, the leader's face changed. His eyes were full of murderous intent. Before Baldy could command his men, Jack the butler intervened. I'm warning you, he shouted. Don't act recklessly, I've already called security. They're on their way. If you know what's good for you, you should leave quickly. Although his heart was trembling, he appeared very calm on the surface. It was unknown if Jack's words had worked or if the leader simply changed his mind. He motioned for his men to leave. After that, he pointed menacingly at James to show that he would not give up so easily. Then he left with everyone else. James admired his new butler's courage for daring to confront so many hoodlums. When the gangsters had disappeared from sight, he asked, Do you know who they are? I don't know, sir, Jack replied. I was just about to ask if you had offended someone. James shook his head. Not that I'm aware of. That's weird, but they looked like Somali pirates, Jack asked. Pirates, James said. It couldn't be. On second thought, he realized it was possible. In the news, it was reported that pirates operating off the coast of Somalia showed signs of expanding deeper into the Indian Ocean as other countries worked together to disrupt their activities in African waters. They were getting more and more aggressive in this expanded territory, seriously threatening the safety of Maldives. But if they were pirates, why would they want to buy his villa? There were so many others in the bay and on the surrounding islands. Why did they specifically target his? And why approach him on his very day of arrival? They must have sent people to keep an eye on this property, he realized. They were waiting for the owner to appear. This way they could arrive immediately and intimidate him into selling. Jack tried to ease his mind. You don't have to worry. The security of this villa is very good. Right then, three armored vans pulled into the driveway and parked in a spread out pattern around the Hummer. More than 30 security guards rushed out and took positions around the villa. They moved swiftly and professionally. It was obvious they were former soldiers who had undergone many years of training. The commander approached James and bowed respectively. Hello, sir, he said. I am Singh, the captain of the security team for this residential area. Surveillance showed a threatening incident here, so we rushed over. May I ask if you need any help now? It's fine. They're all gone, James said. But I appreciate your speedy response. That's what we're here for, sir, Singh said. My men are all former special forces soldiers of the Indian Army, supplemented by select members of other elite foreign units. We will protect you. It was only then that James realized why that bunch had retreated so quickly. They likely were not prepared to tangle with this experienced security detail. There are special alarm buttons scattered throughout your villa, Singh added. If you are ever faced with a threat again, press the alarm. We will respond immediately. Thank you, James said gratefully. He continued to be deeply impressed by this entire scenario. It seemed like the villa district on Connie Island was a paradise for the world's top billionaires. Even the security guards were special forces. He appreciated the extra layer of security, especially for the women. Singh bowed once more to James and said, Since you are no longer in danger, we will stop disturbing you. He quickly left with his men. Jack smiled and said, Please enjoy your stay. You have my contact information. Call whenever you need me. After he left, James walked into the villa and went straight to the balcony at the back. He looked down at Vanessa, Katie, and Krista chasing each other on the beach. The system still had not told him that the check-in had succeeded. He hadn't been alone since he arrived, so he had no opportunity to ponder the issue. He walked back and forth on the balcony, but there was still no notification of the check-in. This is strange, he mumbled. I've clearly reached the right spot. Walking around the villa again, he suddenly thought, could it be on the second floor? He had yet to explore up there. He quickly walked up the stairs. There was indeed another balcony. 
The view from here was much better than below. It made him feel free. Ding! Congratulations to host for successfully checking in. You have received a reward. It is a nameless island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. The island is 700 nautical miles southwest of Maldives. The next check-in location is on this island. Wait, what? An island? He not only was puzzled, he just realized the enormity of the latest reward. System, are you kidding me? He asked. Another house or a pile of company shares he could understand. But an island? Could it really be given as a reward? How powerful was this system anyway? The origin and ownership transfer of the island is legitimate. Host, you can receive the reward without worry. After the system answered his question, it sank back into silence. He grinned. Since the system said so, I guess I'll accept it. How could he not be excited about having a private island of his own? According to the notification, the island was located in the middle of the Indian Ocean between Mauritius and Maldives. He was instantly imagining it. What kind of island was it? And now, whether to receive the reward or to continue the check-ins, he had to go to this nameless island. It was the way the system worked. James suddenly remembered he had triggered a special reward earlier when he'd captured the bluefin tuna and obtained wilderness survival skills. He had read novels about surviving on a deserted island, and who hadn't seen reruns of Gilligan's Island on TV? Looking at the beautiful women on the beach, he felt extremely lucky to have his own Ginger and Marianne, plus one. Vanessa saw him standing on the second floor balcony. She waved and shouted up to him, Come on down! The sand is so soft! Yes, come, Katie added. Krista also waved and shouted, Enjoy the sunshine and waves with us. James looked at them and smiled. He could not resist their excited invitation. He went downstairs and made his way to the silver white beach. Episode 78, A Hidden Basement When James's feet touched the beach, the sparkling white sand made him feel like he was stepping on powdered sugar. He came up alongside the women and looked at the azure sea stretching out in front of him. As he listened to the gentle sound of the waves, he was filled with a soothing feeling of peace. The women immediately tried to corral him into their playful games. Vanessa took James by the hand and winked at Katie and Krista. The women sprinkled the sand they had gathered beforehand on his head, the warm grains trickling over his shoulders and down his back. Hey, three against one he growled playfully. But before he could finish, he felt three sets of hands on him. With a splash, he was pushed into the sea. James got up and wiped the seawater off his face. He was drenched, but he didn't care. The lady stood on the shore and laughed at him. Still, James did not care. As long as they were having fun, he was fine with being teased. He slowly walked out of the surf and glared at them in mock anger. Whose idea was that? He snarled. They all pointed at each other. Her, not me, her. It was her. In fact, James knew Vanessa was the mastermind, but he wanted to target Krista first, who had tactically assumed the role of the big sister among the threesome. He made a sudden rush for them. The three women screamed and scattered like a group of startled chickens. James zeroed in on Krista, ignoring Vanessa and Katie's taunts from a distance. His goal was to divide and conquer. Krista was thrilled to be singled out by James. She knew his feelings for her were completely different now because of her confession last night. He no longer saw her as merely his personal assistant. So she didn't try too hard to escape, and he soon caught her. He hugged her soft body and threw her onto his shoulder then trotted to the water and dumped her into the sea. She yelped in delight. It was Katie's turn next. She ran screaming as he pursued her, though it was clear she wasn't trying too hard to get away either. She too was thrust onto James's shoulder and thrown into the sea. Then he set his sights on Vanessa. She took one look at his wicked smile and called out in a sing-song voice like a schoolgirl on a playground. I quit. I'm not playing anymore. I'm going back to the villa. She turned and ran toward the house. 
James laughed and rushed after her. Once the game starts, there is no quitting. It only ends after you get wet. Even though she had a head start, Vanessa couldn't outrun James. She also was caught and thrown into the bay. In the end, all four of them were drenched. James couldn't help admiring their beautiful figures as their clothes clung tightly to their bodies. He didn't have long to enjoy the view. They dragged him into the water again, then dug a pit for him to lie in so they could bury him up to his neck. Only when the sun sank below the horizon did the four of them return to the villa. After washing up and changing, Vanessa, Katie, and Krista worked together to prepare a sumptuous dinner of spicy noodle soup, followed by local shrimp and vegetables over rice. Afterward, they retired to the balcony on the second floor to relax. The moon was bright and the stars sparkled in the night sky. The ocean breeze gently rustled the curtains behind them. The smell of the sea was rich and lovely. Sitting quietly under the moon and listening to the sounds of the ocean, it was an utterly charming scene. James leaned back in his chair and after dinner whiskey in his hand. Krista was to his left and Katie leaned on the porch railing on his right. Vanessa had begun to feel restless, so she was downstairs exploring the first floor of the villa. The three of them were quiet, absorbing the moment. James was as happy as he'd ever been since the journey began. They heard footsteps rushing up the stairs, then Vanessa burst onto the balcony. She seemed agitated. You guys, come check this out. James sensed she had encountered some danger and stood up quickly. After all, there had been a gang of ruffians here earlier that day, and in the back of his mind, he was still on alert for trouble. Vanessa, what's wrong? he asked. Her doe-like eyes looked startled. I found a hidden basement. James tensed up. What? A hidden basement? How could this be? Jack had shown him the entire villa that day, but there wasn't any secret room. It was not particularly strange for a large villa to have a basement to store food, sports equipment, or other important belongings. This was especially so for a luxury villa built specifically for a wealthy clientele. However, as the new owner, James should have been told about this part of the house. It wasn't even mentioned in the information packet Lahar had given him. Jack certainly should have known about it, but apparently he didn't, or he would have included it in the tour. James was becoming suspicious. He immediately made the connection with the pirates. Maybe this had something to do with why they wanted to buy the villa. There's a secret passage under the stairs on the first floor, Vanessa said excitedly. Show me, James said. With Katie and Krista trailing behind curiously, Vanessa led the way downstairs. 